Uh, good afternoon to all of you and welcome to all of you into this uh, virtual channel it's a youtube channel of uh, regional science and planetarium calicut so today this is the 5th june uh, people all over the world they observe this day as world environment day under this pandemic condition um, now we are doing this program as a virtual platform so Every year, 5th June, observed as International World Environment Day. Now, this year, the topic is restoring our ecosystem. So, we have an eminent and experienced person with us for um, giving his experience, sharing about these wetlands of Kerala. So, today with us, Dr. Rishyam Ramanan. He is the Assistant Professor of prestigious Central University of of Kerala on Kasargod. Wetlands is a distinct ecosystem. Actually, there is a floody water either permanently or seamlessly <coughs> which where oxygen-free process prevail. Wetlands provide many societal benefits, food and habitat for fish and wildlife, water quality improvement, flood storage, shoreline er erosion control, economically beneficial natural products for human use. So <coughs> wetlands are also called as the kidneys of our planets. So today the topic is wetland ecosystems and need for restore and conserve climate resilient Kerala. So I invite uh, Dr. Rishiram Ramanan for giving his talk. He, is from, <coughs> he has worked at the intersection of research and development, industry and policy in the environment, science and technology for 15 years. So on behalf of all of you, I invite uh, Dr. Rishram Ramanan for giving the talk. Welcome you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy to be amongst you uh, on the occasion of uh, World Environment Day 2020. And uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Sunil, uh, for the invitation. And uh, thank you, RSCP, Calicut uh, as a whole, and your team uh, for the invitation. I'm happy to note that this is going to be a uh, virtual uh, platform hosted in YouTube. And uh, I think many more are joining uh, via YouTube. Uh, so uh, with this, uh, uh, please allow me to uh, share my presentation on the topic. And uh, this is going to be a, a kind of a popular uh, kind of a lecture wherein everybody understands the issues of uh, 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 the issues of conservation, uh, which wetland ecosystems, uh, 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 you know, uh, kind of uh, undergoes. And uh, what are the possible ways of, uh, from us citizens? What are the possible ways of of, uh, trying to restore them okay and uh, i'm going to take examples or uh, some work done in uh, on kasargod wetlands uh, uh, because we were without any data on kasargod wetlands and i'm going to tell you about you know uh, how uh, wetlands in kerala what are the major concerns and how it is linked to climate change and why there is an urgent need to conserve these ecosystems fragile ecosystems actually like sir said kidneys right uh, so they are very very fragile so please allow me to share my screen. So yeah, we uh, will be dealing with this topic on wetland ecosystems and need to restore and conserve for climate resilient Kerala. So there are, uh, like you have seen uh, here, uh, there are two components uh, uh, in this topic. One is on wetlands and another one is on climate change or climate resilience in Kerala and how do we build that uh, through wetlands. So, uh, and uh, like, you know, it's good that we are celebrating World Environment Day uh, on June 5th, but as far as if you ask me as an environmental science professor in Central University of Kerala, I would uh, tell you that every day you should, uh, you know, celebrate as an environment day and uh, sitting in Kerala now, when many of you sitting in Kerala now, you might be experiencing the beauty of uh, monsoon, monsoon season, uh, right? So with the monsoon season, uh, earlier we used to enjoy the beauty of the monsoon season. Now we are seeing the dangers of 
the monsoon season as well and uh, how it is in uh, you know related to wetland is what we are going to see uh, uh, and we'll go to a slide and uh, although this was prepared for an interactive session i'm not sure whether we can have an interaction i was thinking that we'll have an interaction with school students so uh, where was this and when was this is the question okay and these are uh, these some of these images are from uh, google and this is uh, a place uh, uh, in arnavalam in uh, kerala and this was taken in 2018 and you can see it is completely you know although you can see a lot of uh, greenery around they are uh, basically uh, coconut uh, plantations uh, uh, are you know uh, houses with coconut uh, plants and you can see that you know uh, in later images uh, how these plantations are converted uh, pristine forest into plantations right so this is completely flood intended uh, uh, way back in 2018 Uh, and the picture of Alapura uh, uh, or Ernakulam brother, which is at uh, which is the largest city in Kerala. Ernakulam is the district where uh, we have Cochin, and this is the highland. And you saw what you saw earlier was a lowland in Kerala. And this is the highland, uh, probably Nidiki uh, region in Kerala. Uh, uh, and you can see, you know, water flowing through, and there are chances. You know, obviously the incline is so. Uh, you know, uh, so steep that there are obviously chances of a land uh, landslide. And well, this is again 2018, and this one is one of the very popular images in uh, social media. Uh, you can see people being evacuated uh, using a utensil. Uh, uh, you know, again in 2018, and then trenching rain. and this is the uh, loss of uh, property especially agriculture this is in wynad you look at uh, uh, the uh, plantain plantation or the banana uh, you know uh, plantation here uh, uh, and uh, completely destroyed and this is an another popular image from the local uh, you know kerala based uh, tv channel mathrumi and uh, what you see here is uh, the earthworms okay and why do earthworms come to the surface when there is uh, you know earthworms are usually associated with subsurface isn't it so earthworms have come to the surface uh, do we have students here sir in this platform here who will be no sir student no sir okay all right so earthworms you know you see uh, usually in the subsurface uh, immediately after the flood of 2018 uh, and during the flood of 2018 what happened was we had all the top soil been removed or eroded uh, uh, because of the flood that happened and uh, the top soil when it gets eroded and you can see that you know uh, in the picture you can see uh, sand so uh, the uh, river uh, or the flood uh, water uh, you know brings a lot of sediments and sand and then they they get deposited what happens is when the top soil is completely eroded the subsurface soil is exposed and therefore you know and it is a runoff uh, so there is a very little percolation or infiltration and immediately after the flood because of uh, high uh, you know uh, evaporation rates and because the sand gets deposited at the top and we don't have the top soil which is very uh, rich in humus or organic matter and which can have a very good water holding capacity whereas sand does not have water holding capacity and uh, uh, because there is no top soil all this water gets evaporated and there is no infiltration or percolation and uh, therefore it has uh, immediately after uh, the flood uh, the summer after the flood we saw a dip in the uh, ground water tables across kerala so uh, you had a, you know uh, once in a so called once in a century flood of 2018 after 1924 and then we had immediately had water scarcity in the following summer and the, this is one reason uh, because of the erosion of the top soil the other reason is we didn't have a good uh, uh, you know northeast monsoon or tula varsham uh, as it is called here in, uh, and then we didn't also have a summer uh, rainfall uh, you know uh, which were actually below normal 
so therefore you know uh, the com- uh, you know combination of issues led to uh, reduction in the groundwater table in that summer okay so uh, and this is what was happening in kerala uh, and uh, these are images uh, from google i told you these are my own images and my own visits this is a tribal uh, hamlet near a tribal hamlet in wayanad and this is uh, the river uh, you know uh, which is connected to the banasa uh, sagar dam and uh, can you guess what this is uh, yeah we'll, uh, those uh, online actually can uh, put it up in the chat box uh, uh, and uh, you know you might uh, get claps from your fellow uh, you know uh, onlineers and netizens so uh, this is uh, actually the canal which you see the water uh, which is gone into that canal was not a canal at all it was rather a road and this was the only road which was uh, accessible to the tribal hamlet for uh, uh, going to a hospital or uh, to the for collecting their rations and this do- road was completely destroyed and you can still see the pole lying down which means that there is no electricity in the uh, uh, in the near past or uh, in the near future as well nobody is coming to them so this was the condition of flood of 2018 uh, and it raised away a lot of their belongings and uh, their uh, uh, you know agriculture uh, was kind of raised away this is a house again taken by us uh, and imagine a river frontage house with all its beauty and natural uh, you know uh, Uh, natural beauty that they were savoring before the flood and uh, once the flood came and after the flood no one was uh, uh, of course uh, you know nothing happened to them except for uh, uh, injury uh, to one of the person in the uh, house they were taken to safety thankfully and uh, the picture to the right uh, and the picture to the right here you can see that you know this is a paddy field now uh, you can see a lot of uh, sand here uh, deposited by the river the river actually t- uh, changed its course and partly that was because of uh, the banasura uh, sagar dam water is being opened and uh, river changing its course so the tribal hamlet was struck between the old course of the river which i showed you before uh, this is the old course of the river and uh, you know river changed its course uh, this direction so there was a tribal ham- hamlet in between uh, exactly this point okay you can see the coconut here uh, and uh, and the, the tribal hamlet was actually sandwiched between these two courses of the river okay and uh, this is their main source of income which is agriculture the paddy fields and it was completely washed away and uh, uh, li- livelihoods were lost obviously thankfully lives were saved and this is the only well that is there uh, uh, in the hamlet and uh, this was completely uh, you know filled with uh, flood water and was unusable even drinking water they go, they have to go far to fetch the drinking water so what we did was we helped them purify the drinking water we took uh, filtration wells with us uh, we made uh, uh, some lo- with uh, locally available materials so uh, and uh, we filtered water for them and of course they need to boil it because the flood water uh, does have coliforms so uh, they did boil and uh, drink the water and i drank it first uh, for them to have that confidence to drink the water again so uh, yeah uh, this was uh, uh, yeah our visit to the tribal hamlet and uh, trying to help them with uh, amenities uh, and uh, drinking water in the first place uh, immediately after the flood so you know this image was not us it is a nasa earth observatory image uh, like you can see the credit in the bottom uh, and uh, this was an image that was taken uh, before flood of the same region and after flood it is not scaled and it is a pseudo colored image uh, so which are ga through done through gis uh, geographic information systems and you can see the after flood thing uh, now to you know ima- when we look at the image interpretation what you see in blue is all water uh, here and here okay uh, what you see here the squares are agriculture fields big agriculture fields okay where agriculture is uh, happening probably paddy and 
here what you see uh, in the pink are all urban settlements around okay the water body these are all wetlands right so yeah as well as here now you look at uh, after the flood the amount of devastation you can't see anything uh, here this is uh, these were all supposed to be houses or urban settlements okay you can't see anything here you can't see anything here now this is in 2018 please remember we will be coming back to this slide later this is way back in 2018 this is what happened okay now now please remember underline this that this was in 2018 and uh, it had happened now there were we saw about uh, floods in kerala this is again you know place where i visited uh, 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 in prakasham district in andhra pradesh drought and these are you know samplings of pulses uh, and you can see the green dots here 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 and here i hope the internet connection is good enough to see that and uh, none of it has grown because it is uh, you know there is no water and there is no rainfall and this is supposed to be an orange orchard okay and it is all dried up no water and again this is uh, again a part of the original orchard and the plant is so dry that it is fallen off and this is an another variety of pulses which is supposed to be drought resistant and it has been planted but no water even for all drought resistant variety and they were facing droughts for two or three years in running and in kerala we were facing uh, we faced floods two years in running 2018 and 19 right and now we faced uh, some kind of uh, a cyclone taude and uh, that has led to you know uh, erosion along the sea coastal lines and we are having a discussion on that and uh, i hope uh, we learn from uh, these cyclones and floods at least okay now uh, you know uh, we are discussing about kerala and uh, why kerala is so prone to floods and natural disasters uh, for that you need to understand the physio you need to understand the physiography of kerala we have got highlands and uh, places like idiki vayanad uh, and uh, we have got midlands and we have got lowlands and the uh, once i showed you the two pictures in the beginning one of a lowland and one of a highland these have different challenges highlands of course when there is you know a, a cloud burst or when there is a, a extreme uh, uh, weather event as it is called when you get a highly extreme rainfall uh, so when you get extreme weather events of course you know highlands suffer uh, from uh, landslides and uh, and the, the low lying it runs the water runs to the low lying areas uh, uh, and the streams uh, downstream and uh, we we get flooding here and here alapura and ernakulam region uh, where in which kochi is there and it is one of the highly populous uh, cities uh, in kerala and uh, uh, the, this is the unique uh, physiography of kerala and i don't think any other uh, uh, state has this kind of a unique physiography uh, uh, maybe apart from uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, goa right uh, we have uh, highlands very close to that of the lowlands so the water flowing through the highlands to the lowlands does not take time the retention uh, the uh, you know uh, the time to uh, you know uh, for the water to reach the lowland does not take much time and we have got dams and if you open that, uh, that uh, you know people are going to be in trouble so th these are the challenges that we face uh, in the present time and what is being projected to be you know uh, uh, projected challenges i will come to that and we, uh, this was taken from uh, kerala state action plan on climate change prepared way back in 2014 uh, and uh, the look at the rainfall distribution now the actual distribution of rainfall the normal that is supposed to be distributed and the deviation from the actual uh, and the normal okay so we are uh, you know already having uh, districts like the one in which i am here i am there kasaragod which has which has the highest rainfall district 3500 uh, you know millimeter more than 3500 around 3500 millimeter per uh, uh, year and we have idiki and uh, uh, other districts which have and again kolkata uh, which have very very high rainfall okay thankfully the southern side uh, as per the normal distribution is a little on the lower side okay and uh, we are already seeing a deviation from the normal and the actual rainfall okay 
that is uh, the present situation um normal rainfall is usually calculated uh, for uh, uh, you know long term uh, uh, average that is from 1961 to uh, for 50 years that is how the normal rainfall is calculated uh, so any deviation from the normal is reported as uh, uh, deficient or excess or above normal or below normal now this is the annual mean max temperature for kerala if for this short uh, one uh, one decade period we have already seen the rising strength uh, uh, you know trend in the temperature maximum temperature now uh, these are uh, future climate projections again projected by government of kerala through the kerala state action plan on climate change this was uh, i guess done using the precis model uh, of uh, hadley center in uk uh, in collaboration with uh, iitm in pune and uh, these are for uh, 2020s 2050s and 2080s in the long term it looks like in the medium term uh, we are going to see a decrease in the rainfall uh, in some districts in kerala uh, especially the northern part uh, but in the longer term we are going to see an increase in the rainfall across kerala so uh, that's a worrying trend and uh, like i told you uh, we had looked at uh, three uh, timelines uh, uh, short uh, uh, medium and long term now we looked at uh, look at medium term which is 2050 uh, so the average rainfall like i told you in the last 50 years for all these districts and then uh, rainfall that is projected for 2050 you can see that there is an increase here uh, increase in the rainfall so the change in rainfall you see most of the southern districts there is a big change in the rainfall and whereas the northern districts there is small decrease but that is a kind of insignificant but you know in the southern districts there is a big change in the rainfall pattern which means there is somewhere around 10 to 20, 30 cm of increase in the rainfall in certain southern districts and 10 to cm 30 cm is a huge number which is amounting to 100 to 300 mm per year and we need to plan for that and the trends are already showing that increase so this is again uh, for uh, temperature uh, the change in temperature and uh, across uh, you know uh, these uh, timelines there is a definitive increase in the temperature and uh, that is an increasing trend it is not an increasing and a decreasing or a decreasing and increasing trend it's not an inconsistent trend but it is a consistent increase in the temperature now uh, you look at the maximum temperature when we uh, talk about temperature we look at maximum and minimum temperature and you see that uh, it is going to increase the maximum temperature is going to increase across most districts or all the districts of kerala except uh, uh, for wayanad where there is only a small change and then you know the change in the maximum temperature is going to be huge for the southern districts so the rainfall is going to be huge for the southern districts the change in the temperature is also going to be huge but you know when you look at the legend carefully we are all uh, the, all the districts in kerala uh, you know and uh, for every other uh, you know state in the country we are going to face a temperature increase of uh, at least 0.5 degrees uh, celsius uh, to 0.7 uh, is the maximum that is projected for kerala in 2050 so in the next 30 years uh, you know uh, by the time uh, uh, you know you go to the next generation they are going to face a lot hotter climate uh in uh, in kerala and other parts of india as well and this is a uh, uh, you know climate projections uh, for uh, minimum temperature again all these southern districts are affected you can see here that all these southern districts are going to have an increase in the minimum temperature as well so the uh, they have implications implications for you know for the society in general uh, for our lifestyle and all of that but uh, for government uh, policy making and you know coastal erosion with respect to climate change a uh, coastal erosion or uh, flood mitigation and management the, we need to have big uh, ticket policy measures uh, yeah, at least in the next 5 to 10 years we need to make otherwise we are going to lose lives and livelihood every single year and uh, one more caution that i would uh, say after uh, uh, you know after a card and uh, you know uh, as a personal uh, observation is that this year we have already you know kind of got large excess of pre monsoon showers 
and uh, this large excess of pre monsoon showers has saturated at least in the northern uh, districts of kerala it has saturated complete the soil okay completely saturated the soil and uh, the our water resources are uh, uh, in you know all our dams are almost you know uh, 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 half filled uh, and we are not even one week into the monsoon and, uh, and another worrying uh, factor is that in in 2018 when we had a, a slight excess uh, uh, rainfall above normal rainfall uh, we uh, our summer uh, rainfall was uh, less therefore the dams were not this full enough so by any chance if we get a normal or a slightly above normal rainfall we are going to encounter a very very difficult situation and another uh, issue is uh, you know in spite of covid when such disasters happen covid actually takes a side step because you need uh, to accommodate people you need to provide them shelter so uh, that is going to be a double uh, challenge to the government and uh, i guess the government has done pretty well in 2018 and 19 yeah and this is the sea level rise in kochi coast in cyclone uh, tau day we have seen visuals of uh, uh you know uh, sea level rise across uh, coast in kerala uh, and we have also seen that in west bengal and odisha they uh, are kind of uh, frequently encountering floods because that bay of bengal is a very active region for flood compared to arabian sea uh, but then we saw visuals in kerala of uh, people losing their uh, you know houses and livelihoods Uh, and uh, we can see scientific evidence for that as well since 1939 there has been a gradual but definitive increase in the sea level yeah, along kochi coast so based on all of these factors uh, you know the we have uh, the government of kerala has prepared a vulnerability assessment for each district and uh, uh, you can see palakkad district uh, more probably because the temperatures are going to soar already it's uh, hottest uh, district in kerala uh, and uh, and uh, alappuzha district are going to be one of the most affected and you can see even trivandrum has a high vulnerability uh, and idiki vinar so all hilly districts uh, you know and uh, coastal uh, uh, district of alappuzha are going to get affected and almost all are in the high vulnerability index or medium to high vulnerability index very high vulnerability index except for two districts this has certainly because of uh, you know our land use changes uh, this is this is a paper or uh, you know a report published by dr t ramachandra who was my supervisor at indian institute of science uh, uh, some 15 years back uh, more than 15 years back in fact uh, so uh, this was uh, you know this is a comparison of 1973 and 2016 Uh, you look at kerala we do that branding of god's own country in the greenery in kerala when people come from other states uh, they uh, just love the greenery in kerala but then uh, uh, with respect to uh, 1973 what you see here is we have increased a lot of monoculture plantations be it rubber or be it coconut i told you across kerala and we are highly urbanized now and you can see with the things in blue the water bodies here we are highly dispersed now they are concentrated in certain regions and, and, uh, and those regions are also seen in red which means those are urban settlements and we are losing those water bodies slowly because of encroachments uh, and you can see some uh, you know uh, big water bodies which you can't see here which means that we are building uh, reservoirs again which have their own ecological implications so again here and all of that so we are building big reservoirs so uh, those reservoirs when they get full uh, those gates are getting opened and during flood that is an another reason why we are uh, getting floods in the lowlands in kerala so we are uh, in for a very uh, difficult time if we are going to get above normal rainfall from here on year on year because even a slight above normal rainfall we are going to face difficult situation year on year that's uh, you know almost taken uh, uh, can be taken as uh, 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 you know the final word and uh, can you see this image uh, here and i showed you the nasa observatory image have you made a mental note of that image see here uh, this is taken again from the kerala state action plan on climate change this is a projection that they have given for 2050 the government of uh, kerala of course 
So you see, what happened in 2018 in the NASA observatory image had actually been projected in 2014 for 2050, but we have already observed that in 2018. So whatever climate change projections that have been projected have already come true. I'll show you the image, the NASA image. You can see the NASA image. Almost, you know, the scaling is different, but uh, the places are almost the same. Uh, you see here, and then this is how the flood has inundated all these regions. The these two images have different scaling, but it is the coast of Kerala. That's the point to underline. And you see here that it is completely inundated, and it is projected to be inundated. But whereas we have already faced that year, last two thousand eighteen. Okay, so we are going to see. Such uh, uh, flood inundation all the time. Uh, whenever we are going to have an above normal rainfall, and the above normal rainfall uh, uh, years, if we are going to have, uh, I am talking about southwest monsoon, and if we are going to have in the previous year a normal northeast monsoon and a normal freeze monsoon shower, and a normal or a slightly above normal monsoon. Uh, uh, we are going to face this kind of situation, and uh, unless We course correct. Okay, now how are we going to link this uh, climate change and uh, wetlands together? Uh, see, wetlands uh, as uh, defined by Ramsar Convention. Ramsar uh, Ramsar Convention is a convention in which India is also a signatory, and uh, this happened in uh, uh, you know in uh, Ramsar in Iran, uh, where all the parties came together and signed. on conservation for wetlands and uh, ramsar convention for conservation of wetlands defines wetlands as areas of marsh fen peat water whether natural or artificial permanent or temporary with water that is static or flowing fresh brackish or salt including marine water the depths of which at low tide does not exceed 6 meters so the you know it excludes uh, several lentic and lotic ecosystems and these are classified as separate ecosystems and they provide a lot of ecosystem services to us like you know uh, sunil sir had mentioned uh, uh, you know uh, first the most prominent thing which you have to read here is flood mitigation and coastal protection and water quality improvement so when we are encroaching on the wetland which we are already doing uh, as citizens you know uh, there are many who are already doing so what happens is that we lose this capacity of flood mitigation that is one of the prime reasons why people complain that water is coming to their uh, uh, fields because in kerala if you ask uh, what is the uh, name of the area which you live in many would say that you know i live in an area which is kind of you know uh, 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 the uh, the area ends with whatever it is called as vial or uh, you know we will see an area here as well in kasaragod which is called as karat vial and uh, and there is an area here again in kasaragod uh, uh, which is called chembetam vial and you can only see housing there and it was earlier vial which means you know it is a, it was a paddy field or it was a wetland before and paddy as you all know is a wetland crop okay so uh, when you are talking about a paddy field it is naturally a wetland and people building you know uh, buildings in low lying areas and then now uh, complaining about uh, uh, flood this is the sad reality of today so these are some of the ecosystem services provided by wetlands uh, which we are actually you know kind of uh, 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 which is kind of intangible and uh, uh, we should actually bargain for right when people are uh, uh, building or uh, people are uh, uh, doing some developmental activities within the wetlands okay then people don't think of you know what is the land registration record of that area and just simply buy land and build on it without uh, taking proper uh, regulatory approvals so this is provisioning uh, provisioning services regulatory services cultural services and supporting services i am not talking about you know something that that is there in the air or out of my imagination for people outside kerala uh, you know and even people inside kerala we have seen you know maradu flats being raised up by an order of the supreme court uh, and uh, you know we uh, that is only one example uh, i am going to tell you there are many hundreds of 
uh, you know encroachments like that uh, encroachments uh, uh, which have been built either uh, you know violating the wetland act uh, that kerala has are violating the environmental protection act that is the coastal regulation zone rules under the environmental protection act uh, so uh, you know either of that building on riparian uh, zones uh, uh, of uh, rivers okay and uh, near the beaches uh, resorts so this happens in kerala because kerala also has a vibrant tourism sector so these are the wetlands in kerala uh, as per the national wetland atlas of 20 10 okay and i am going to give you an account of wetlands uh, uh, you know the statistics of wetlands across kerala uh, uh, the inland uh, inland wetlands man made natural and uh, coastal wetlands we have an area of somewhere around 130000 uh, hectares okay and uh, when we uh, 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 this is a district wise uh, division and some of the districts like alapura uh, that's why you know kerala goes for a model of development which is uh, you know uh, uh, which is based on uh, some of the european countries like netherlands which is which have a high percentage of their area as uh, wetlands or water bodies so alapura has 20 percentage of their area uh, geographical area as uh, wetlands and uh, and again water bodies uh, are in addition to that so uh, you know uh, across kerala we have got a healthy percentage as wetland and uh, and other water bodies like the rivers are in addition to that so you can imagine the percentage when you add up all of that it's going to be a lot higher okay now this is what uh, uh, was done from our lab and in collaboration with my good friend mr dr srijit from uh, KFR, Kerala, Kerala Forest Research Institute, the GS marks were generated because when you have to create awareness on wetlands and how to conserve them, it is important to have data at hand. And for Kasarwood district, we didn't even have GS maps for most of the wetlands. And uh, we have 13 major wetlands in Kasarwood, and for other districts, uh, there is fairly good studies that have been done, but Kasarwood, sadly, there were no studies, and uh, we had initiated that. and uh, Kerala st uh, State Wetland Authority has also supported this project. So uh, here uh, we had, uh, you know, we have three, 13 major wetlands. By, by major, we define wetlands as, uh, you know, major when they are more, more than 2.5 hectares in area as per uh, the Kerala definition. So uh, <coughs> we have 13 major wetlands and starting from northern part of Kasa Road, which is the northernmost tip of uh, Kerala. We are sharing here the border with Karnataka uh, for non-Keralites who are here. And uh, starting from here to the southernmost part, where we are sharing the border again uh, with Kannur district of Kerala, and we share a water body also, which is called as Kavai wetland, and this is one of the largest brackish water wetland in Kerala. And uh, to the east, we share the border uh, with uh, uh, with Karnataka uh, and uh, Kano district. Uh, so Karnataka border is here and here as well. So these are all coastal wetlands. We have got two in uh, inland wetlands. Coastal wetlands, of course, are be uh, are brackish water uh, are saline, uh, and then the inland wetlands we have only got two, which is uh, fresh water. So uh, each of these wetlands, Kunjatur wetland, where we have got good uh, diversity, uh, biodiversity. Uh, this is Uppala wetland, again a coastal wetland. And Shiria and Kumbula, these are connected wetlands. This is uh, connected wetlands. So we have done the ground routing. You can see the blue dots here, uh, you know, which means we, we did some sampling also for uh, water quality assessment, which I am not presenting here. Uh, so uh, Kumbula and Shiria together are one wetland and then Mogral Putur uh, is an another wetland. So I'm coming from north to south. Chandragiri wetland is part of a big river which is called as the Chandragiri river. Uh, and uh, the wetland uh, is a coastal wetland and before the river joins the sea. And Kalanad wetland uh, is the next coastal wetland and uh, Bekal, Bekal, you know, uh, many of you uh, who have had the opportunity to visit Kerala might know, or many of you might have visited this Bakel Fort, which is one of the important uh, tourist attractions in uh, uh, Kerala, and in, especially in Kasago district, the, the most important in Kasago district. Uh, and uh, why I'm 
I'm spending some time on this is because it's a very important tourist spot, and you will see that there is how tourism disturbs ecosystem. And this is Kapil Kotigulam. This is another uh, tourist spot where we have got a beach, Kapil Beach. Uh, so uh, uh, you know these two are important tourist spots. And this is uh, Chitali wetland, and this is an inland wetland. Along uh, the other wetlands, you can see the coastline here. This is a coastline, and very close to the sea. Here, this is an inland wetland. There is no coastline, and uh, this is a freshwater wetland, and uh, the wetland which has the most bird diversity. avian diversity and this is an another wetland which is called kara toil i was telling you the word while uh, means uh, field or agriculture or paddy field uh, so <coughs> kara toil again an inland wetland okay and you can see how houses all along this uh, region all along the borders of this and uh, kerala has one of the highest population density uh, in india now the avian uh, diversity in wetlands of kasaragod you can see that we have got a lot of migratory birds coming in and you see that the kanichara wetland uh, which is an inland freshwater wetland obviously birds do like uh, freshwater uh, so has the highest bird diversity okay and i am talking about bird diversity here and the kasaragod wetlands uh, especially because you know uh, <coughs> of the fact that i just want to entice students into bird watching and uh, slowly into wetland conservation those students who are hearing this online uh, you know uh, that uh, you know uh, people get uh, attracted towards birds or larger mammals uh, than you know microscopic so i work on something called as algae which is a microscopic uh, uh, organism so uh, teaching biodiversity of algae Uh, for uh, students or school students would be uh, like some for you to hear but when it comes to birds you are all excited so slowly you can, we can bring the conservation angle to you that is the idea behind you know teaching uh, or giving a lecture on avian diversity in kasaragod wetlands i'll show you some of the pictures as well so this is a pie chart of the avian uh, diversity now uh, these are you know some of the migrants that we receive in kasaragod wetlands uh, although the photo is very small the birds themselves are uh, very small this is basic uh, uh, this is a pacific golden plover and it's a winter visitor to india and this is was seen in talapadi wetland that is in the northern part and uh, this is a blue tailed uh, bee eater actually it is seen in the northeast and the eastern coast of india so we just visits uh, here in the western coast and it was seen in the kumbla wetland and this is kentish plover very small bird kentish plover you can see the larger ones uh, here and uh, and it's a migrant from europe and uh, you i we saw it in the uppala wetland and some of the natives uh, you know the kingfisher many of you might have seen uh, distributed all across uh, uh, you know india uh, near the water bodies uh, people with a you know uh, students with a keen eye would definitely watch kingfisher but this kingfisher is called as a lesser pied kingfisher it's not as colorful as the uh, you know uh, the ones you uh, usually see the blue and brown ones uh, so uh, this is and uh, uh, you can see across the plains of india but it's a difficult to spot not so easy and this is white breasted water hen called uh, you know near one of the varieties of near kori and it's a very very secretive bird uh, uh, it uh, it was sitting uh, uh, you know uh, inside the mangroves okay and it is widespread in india but it is uh, difficult to spot and this is a common uh, green shang again you know uh, it is a uh, migrant as far as uh, the western ghats are concerned but it, and it's a non breeder here uh, whereas it breeds in the other parts of the world but uh, it also breeds in andaman it's, it's reported to breed in breed in the andaman nicobar islands so uh, uh, this is one of the common natives here natives of india Uh, as far as india is concerned not kerala and uh, we have got some threatened ones and near threatened ones as well the conservation status all the other ones i have shown you were of least concern but this one oriental darter is a near threatened one and we saw that in the bakel wetland it's a majestic bird uh, oriental darter okay so uh, these are some of the uh, concerns uh, which uh, we face uh, in the wetlands of kasaragod district uh, you know uh, i told you about the kavai wetland being one of the largest freshwater wetlands 
okay and uh, there are developmental activities which is uh, happening in the karingod river and the, these developmental activities are often unscientific or you know proper environmental impact assessment of these development activities never happen therefore there is no mitigation plan per se for you know uh, uh, ecosystem damage so karingod river is the river which supplies uh, 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 you know water to this uh, kawai wetland as i told you it's a brackish water wetland which means that there is an input from the sea the saline water coming from the sea and karingod river supplying fresh water so brackish water wetlands hold a lot of diversity because of the fact that uh, you know uh, the salinity gradient is established there and uh, there is different levels of salinity in different parts of the wetland say for example upstream of the wetland uh, you have uh, say uh, the river water coming in there you get uh, more of fresh water and less of saltness in the water uh, salinity in the water and uh, along the way if you go the salinity increases and when you go to the coastal region the salinity is at the highest so each species has its own you know salinity range so it can only live in that range so there are species uh, which will only live in upstream where there is a uh, more of fresh water and then downstream uh, there are species which will only live in downstream and the other species only live in this between region transition zones they are got so with the diversity is very huge and not only that the river brings in a uh, you know, lot of nutrients at the end uh, to the wetland so uh, the productivity of the wetland is also very high therefore the overall diversity of the wetland is higher in brackish water wetlands okay so when you have developmental activities in the watershed region of the river which is supplying to the wetland what happens is one a it pollutes the wetland uh, you know if the development uh, activities are very huge therefore leading to eutrophication and other issues b when you are diverting that water you know the water input to the wetland uh, becomes less therefore the fresh water input into the wetland becomes fresh uh, less therefore you know the salinity levels in the wetland go, uh, you know keeps increasing therefore changing the entire character of the wetland uh, from brackish water to uh, you know uh, a different character now what we saw uh, you know we, uh, in the recent floods was also that in there was water logging uh, across national highway in kumbla and mogadral and many other wetlands breached their uh, uh, you know normal uh, 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 normal boundaries okay and immediately after uh, we saw a lot of acute shortage of water uh, fresh water uh, and ground water depletion okay and kasaro district has this unique uh, challenge that we receive the highest rainfall uh, you know in all of kerala but at the same time most of our uh, ground water is depleted and uh, some of our taluks uh, as per uh, the ground water board central ground water boards uh, report some of our taluks are classified as critical that was, that is one reason is because we have laterite rocks and the percolation rate of laterite rocks of water is very less 3 to 7 percent is percolation rate therefore you know nothing goes in everything runs off into the sea so we are left with uh, not much ground water at all so these are the current concerns so uh, uh, therefore wetland conservation is very very important for kasaragod not only kasaragod but all of kerala because we are facing this threat of climate change and wetlands can uh, have a huge ecosystem service of flood mitigation Uh, and uh, in kerala uh, yeah uh, before going to kerala you look at this wetland which is called uh, kanichira wetland i told you uh, this is such a marshy land think of you know sampling here at around 5 o'clock when you are going for uh, avian diversity that is the time you go uh, whenever you want to watch birds or bird watching that is early hours in the morning and even for water sampling we go before 8 so you need to get up at around 4:35 and then you know uh, slowly reach the place and then start bird watching and sample and come back and you have to go along all this marshes it was uh, this work was done by uh, mr aminesh he is my uh, he is our phd scholar and uh, in our lab sustainable resources laboratory in central university of kerala and he has to weed through all these weeds uh, marshy lands okay and uh, in this wetland uh, you can see you know uh, uh, normally you see human animal conflict here we see human bird conflict what happens is the this wetland is being encroached by you know uh, paddy farmers so some part of this wetland is 
uh, in used as paddy fields and this probably uh, purple moor hen actually you know ventures into their farmland and uh, you know completely destroys them so the here we see usually see a human bird conflict which is a very uh, uh, which is a rarity we are used to seeing human animal conflict of elephant and uh, tiger but uh, here in this wetland we have got a human bird conflict so uh, you know in kerala the main concerns are you know encroachment i'll show you a picture see this is uh, the sand mining that is happening in one of uh, wetlands here again the picture was taken by one of my research scholars illegal sand mining okay so encroachment and encroaching illegally and violating the wetland act okay and sand mining it violates many acts okay plastic pollution is a major major issue in kerala because waste waste management we have an issue and uh, of course the uh, emerging issue out of the plastic pollution issue is the micro and nano plastics in water bodies across kerala and across india i can safely say that okay and eutrophication and as an another issue of non point uh, pollution and the fertilizers entering the water body and uh, and untreated sewage that's not a much of a problem in kerala except for urban pockets but again you know other parts of india this is a major issue untreated sewage and uh, uh, dissolved oxygen levels getting low and therefore uh, the death of a complete ecosystem so you need to completely restore it again and then overfishing is a problem in kerala and other parts of india as well so these are some of the concerns of uh, uh, you know uh, that we are facing with uh, wetland conservation okay so what can you do is the next question that comes to our mind what can i do to prevent uh, you know uh, ecosystem damage and conserve these ecosystems so first is you know to understand about wetlands understand about the biodiversity that is there in the wetlands understand about the ecosystem services that they provide and then next step is to create awareness among people so uh, i would be glad if this uh, this session has helped you in understanding at least partly about wetlands and you know helping create uh, you know in your neighborhood first of all to your family that's the first thing which we can do because it's a youtube channel and the number is uh, kind of unlimited uh, the uh, you know uh, number of people who can watch so i'm urging all of you to create awareness inside your families first urge them uh, to kind of you know help in restoring the wetlands and conserving the wetlands okay urge your neighbors urge your larger society your villages or you know your apartments okay and then you know if they don't hear you want them you know you tell them that this is going to happen okay and then if you if they still don't hear you just reject them and you know uh, uh, and tell them that they are not good enough if they are not able to think about the environment if they are only thinking about the environment on the world environment day they are not good enough if they are only giving speeches they are not good enough they need to act okay so how how can you warn them you can tell them that they are violating several acts that i told you you can also tell them that they are going to violate the indian uh, penal code if they are going to breach any of this uh, i'm going to tell you sections uh, where they are going to breach the penal code section 268 which is public nuisance again it is uh, part of tort laws or common laws okay uh, 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 that is also applicable for such uh, uh, you know public nuisance uh, when they whenever they are you know uh, destroying or damaging our natural resources including wetlands and water and uh, 269 70 is uh, infection uh, or infectious disease uh, through water or through any media okay so that is uh, now you can all understand about infectious diseases so whenever there is defecation or other things related to the wetland you need to urge them because that is going to spread infectious diseases and coliforms in the water and that water is going to be unsuitable for drinking or any other purpose so now and 277 is for pollution of water knowingly okay with full knowledge that they are going to pollute the environment and 278 again is pollution of air and uh, to the 430 and 432 is general pollution offenses so you can warn them of all these consequences okay and you can urge them as much as possible okay and you can go for bird watching you can take help of experts you can you know these days there are a lot of avenues to learn so uh, 
uh, you can you know slowly get start interested in different aspects of wetland conservation not only bird watching amphibians and other you know reptiles and other uh, you know assemblages of organisms that are associated with wetlands so uh, i hope and pray uh, you will be you know uh, you will get uh, interested after watching this uh, lecture and i uh, i pray that you work for the environment uh, uh, you know uh, in, and uh, take care of the environment in whatever endeavors you do in the future as well uh, with this uh, thank you and i would like to thank my collaborators here uh, in crip uh, in korea korea institute of research institute of biosciences and biotechnology near in nagpur where i did my phd and in institute of science where i had uh, my rich, uh, you know uh, i got initiated into research and then uh, national institute of uh, technology calicut full code uh, where uh, we work with them uh, for uh, biodegradable polymers and university of sevilla in uh, uh, in uh, spain uh, we have a couple of uh, you know uh, research works with them and kfri my good friend uh, shrijit uh, who worked with uh, us in, on this project and i would also like to thank my funding agency which is swark i told you state wetland authority kerala and all my research scholars especially uh, mr amnish he is the hero of this work uh, so he did a lot of hard work uh, going into the field and taking all these pictures and uh, you know uh, doing the water quality analysis as well as you know the as and uh, grishma she also works on algae uh, and heavy metal pollution ashwati she works on uh, biodegradable polymers aishwarya uh, she works on uh, uh, on uh, algae based cosmetics algae biotechnology and shilpa as uh, a jr of uh, sub funded project government of india's project uh and i would like to thank them and uh, this is my lab website and uh, these are my contact details i'll be happy if you get in touch and this is mr amnish uh, who did the work and he's with his a wing friends here uh thank you thank you for your time and i would be happy to uh, take questions and and this is the lake uh, panganso lake in ladakh where i sure i did uh, sampling you know, for one of our projects I'll be happy to take questions, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Actually, yes, nicely here, nicely explain what are the why Kerala is more prone to natural calamities and what are the importance of wetlands. And it's very quite surprising that there are thirteen wetlands in Kasaragod district. So, most of the people are not aware of how many wetlands in Kerala. So, these are a very interesting thing. Then, anybody can ask some question. They can you can ask questions. If some students have already joined here, if they want to ask some questions, you can please ask. I'll be happy to answer either in uh, uh, you know English or in Malayalam. So please feel free to ask, and you know, uh, and uh, please feel free to ask uh, as a friend, right? And as an environmentalist, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you, uh, Sunila. So I want to ask one question. Then, what is there any agency for giving? Who is the recognized it is a wetland? Any agency the how they are naming it as a wetland area? Yeah, we have got the state wetland authority. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, state wetland authority, uh, uh, and for each state there is a wetland authority and there is a central authority as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, and uh, they they have earmarked all these major wetlands. Uh, and they have started work uh, uh, since I guess 2017, the uh, 1617. So uh, we will be they will be earmarking all those, uh, uh, and uh, the, they have an empowered committee which looks at uh, wetlands in Kerala, and uh, they will be earmarking all these major wetlands in the Iberian zone in the near future, I believe. Okay, so there is some work that is going on uh, on wetland conservation. Uh, a lot of work, in fact, but you know, for uh, earmarking the wetlands and uh, linking them to revenue records and stuff like that, it takes time. Okay. Any questions? Audience, any questions? If you want, you can type it in your chat box also if you want. Yes. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Sajna. Please, please uh, feel free to ask questions.
uh, let's make it more interactive you can ask any questions uh, you know related to environment i'll be to happy to answer this covid uh, situation have changed any environmental uh, scenario if there are any changes in our environment this covid lockdown or uh, uh sir we have seen uh, yeah lockdown has had a positive and a negative impact i would say mm -hmm. positive impact uh, we have seen that you know air quality has got better uh, visibly uh, water quality unless it is tested we are not sure because you know water may be clear visibly but then it may have dissolved solids uh, so air quality is uh, definitely changed uh, through scientific data as well uh, it has been proved uh, then uh, the negative impact i would say that you know the biomedical waste that is there getting generated household and stuff mm -hmm. like that so that is a big negative impact and uh, we are not able to you know cope up with the amount of biomedical waste we don't have the infrastructure to kind of burn all the biomedical waste that is generated that's a negative impact and then another negative impact i would say is our uh, you know lifestyles have changed uh, people uh, you know uh, washing hands and all of that uh, with respect to wetlands and water i would say that water consumption has increased uh, because of lifestyle changes so uh, I, uh, during these years when you know we have got excess rainfall and water then not an issue but then yeah, these habits if they uh, persist and if they remain uh, even after covid for covid appropriate behavior or infectious disease is appropriate behavior i would i would see that there is going to be another uh, water crunch or a crisis across the world that is going to happen so uh, these are areas which we are working on also uh, what is the impact of covid uh, uh, on environment this is a area which we are working and we are you know brainstorming so yeah that's a very good question sir not many ask this okay i think nobody is asking questions okay now okay, if they have they can you are have the mobile number okay if, if you want you can ask direct contact him over phone yeah i'll be happy and uh, yeah, i hope you have noted down my uh, contact yeah. details yes 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 um am i audible yes you are audible please introduce yourself and then you may ask the question okay sir i would like to introduce myself to you i'm vani lakshmi from providence girls high secondary school okay mommy. so i was going to ask if uh, did uh, did our government take any measures to protect mangroves yet mangrove yes uh, that is uh, priority for most governments uh, when they are talking about coastal erosion that is the one natural solution that comes to most governments and uh, of course uh, when you know ma mangroves are usually uh, within uh, the wetland or in the riparian zone of the wetland so they are naturally protected uh, the, uh, through those acts the coastal Re the regulation zone act and uh, uh, the wetland act but then again the major issue is that you know implementation of those acts or enforcement of those acts like i don't know how uh, uh, you know to put it across to you i guess you know i can tell you like you know when you do something which is illegal or you know uh, when you do something which the government says not to do the police uh, kind of you know plays a role right moni moni are you from yes, any sir. chance Pardon, sir. You are from Kerala. Yes. Yes, sir. I'm from Calicut. Calicut. Okay. Sorry. So, अपो uh, police in uh, police आणा नमलडे law and order नोकन्ना उरे विभाग वाले. But uh, environmental uh, laws चाहिए बो प्रश्नम वरना दे. Unless you court IPC, याम बरने ले Indian Penal Court court ती दल मात्रे police इन्दा प्रवील वरलो. मत्ते acts अन्नम violate ही देगे न्याले नमलो police इन्दा प्रवील वरला. Uh, we uh, you know the central pollution control board when you are polluting uh, water or whatever so they have, they are the uh, law and order agency or implementation or enforcement agency appo angantha oru prashnam undu our acts are all strong we have envisaged adayidu nammal ell endu tharam pollution endana ne like mitigate cheyanulla laws nammadathundu പക്ഷെ പ്രശ്നം എന്താന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാല് അതിനെ ഇംപ്ലിമെന്റ് ചെയ്യാനുള്ള ഏജൻസി ആർ എൻഫോ
അത്രയും സ്ട്രോങ് അല്ല എന്നാണ് ഇന്നത്തെ സാഡ് പ്രാക്ടിക്കൽ റിയാലിറ്റി സിറ്റിസൺസിനും അവയർനെസ് ഇല്ലാത്ത കാരണം അവർ ചെയ്തു പോകുന്നതാണ് ആൻഡ് ഇത്രയും ആൾക്കാർ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ അത് എൻഫോഴ്സ് ചെയ്യുന്നതോ അല്ലെ അതിനെ എന്താണ് ഇംപ്ലിമെന്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നതോ വളരെ ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടായിരിക്കും ആൻഡ് മെനി പീപ്പിൾ ഡൂ ഇറ്റ് ഓവർ നൈറ്റ് ഓൾസോ this can you know this environmental conservation can only happen through a citizens movement it can't be a government centric only approach okay and government can only you know to an extent they enact laws and enforce it even during covid time you know where the government is not able to enforce the restrictions that have been you know uh, uh, given to people not only in kerala kerala still we are a rule based society but uh, when you take uh, other states they are not able to enforce the way they would like to right that is because the citizens are kind of not so aware luckily in kerala we have a very very vibrant uh, you know uh, uh, civil society and which fights for the environment and which uh, you know uh, kind of helps conserve environment so we are uh, a, a, in a far better state than uh, some of the other states of kerala uh, some of the other states of india so uh, uh, <clears throat> i believe we are in a far better state uh, of affairs of uh, you know environment okay thank you tan thank you tanha and uh... okay sir then let us will conclude this session sir yeah thank you thank you sir i am happy okay. to join all the uh, you know budding environmentalists and school students yeah uh, and i am happy that you invited me and i thank you for inviting me Okay, when this period is over, sir, you please come to Calicut and we'll arrange a face-to-face program, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. I'll be happy to. I'll be happy to. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. And th- thank you for all the participants. Sir, could you please share your uh, phone number uh, with me? Maybe you can just mail me your uh, contact. Okay. 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 Thank okay. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah.